And welcome to part two of the treasure chest build. If you haven't watched part one, it's linked down below and I highly suggest you do so you know what the heck I'm doing here. Regardless, I'm not going to talk for too long. We're just gonna get right into this. Enjoy. Now we're moving on to the trim for the treasure chest and this is going to be very time consuming but it turns out really good in the end. So the one thing you're going to have to do is cut your standard EVA foam mats, these are the exercise mats I use all the time, to 3 inch wide strips by 17 inches long or depending on how big your treasure chest is. This can change and also this design can change because it's up to you how you want to look it. So once it's there you can see that I have used contact cement to join these together and you can barely see the line there. It's there but it's not enough to be really pronounced. And on my design, I did these nodules where I'm going to be putting bolts on. It just gives it a bit of character to make it look pretty cool when you're actually putting it all together. Uh, the only thing that I'm going to mention here is you can see at the top here, which side is it? It's hard to see on the camera there. This top is done at 10 degrees to match the chest because what this actually is, is the vertical corner on the side. And when you make these, you want to make sure you make match sets. So you'll see on the inside here, I've got top marked and I've got front left marked. And as I go through them, you will see all the different things marked on each one. Can't really see it on the camera, but it's there. You'll just have to take my word for it. Now, once you've got this all together, I use a Dremel to do my typical metal type texture. And there's a link up there to a video on how I pull that off. But you can see here, it's pretty straightforward. I'm not going to, you know, beat it into your heads on how to do this. If you've watched any of my videos before, you'll know how to do it. And if you haven't, you'll watch some more of my videos and you'll learn how to do it. Isn't that the coolest system ever? Regardless, go watch that link. <laughs> so once you've got all this done and you've used a heat gun to seal it and have it pretty much done, I put a coat of uh, bla flat iron, black flat iron on this. And you can see it's just a little bit metallic. And this gives it your base coat and gets it away from just the flat matte color. So there's your flat matte color. You can see the difference that the little bit of spray paint does to it. Then from there, you're going to be using gold acrylic to do a dry brush over the whole thing. What it does is it just adds a little bit more detail. And you know what? I think I've got these backwards. <laughs> Never mind. Okay. You didn't see that. Now, on this one, you use the gold dry brush and you put a whole coat onto it to pretty much start off the the patina. I always love saying that even that word always makes me sound more fancy than I actually am. So the patina is this gold brush style. Then after that, look at this, I'm actually in the right order this time. I use a bottle of acrylic black wash and I once again it's pretty much you want to water it down to the point it stains your hand, but doesn't say okay, you can still see the stain from it on my hand. And then you'll sp you'll spray the whole thing and let it dry. And you can see how it really mellows out the gold. Now the final step, once you've got all that done, is you use uh, another gold, but you want to make sure it's a lighter gold to really pronounce all of the features here. And then you dry brush the whole thing one more time. And you end up with going from what would be flat matte from here to there and you can see just how different it ends up being anyways I'm gonna go through all of the trim from this point on is based on this technique so I'm not going to rehash it I'm just gonna show you me sticking it to the the treasure chest and moving on from there see you in a bit now as you can see the side trim is on everything's in place this part here is very much up to you if you don't want to do a lion head you can do whatever you want you just have to make sure that when the hasp comes down that it works right now see the top is not attached because i have to put trim on the inside of here and i don't dare put anything down until that trim is in place to make sure that everything closes I'm professional how oh, everything closes properly now this here, what I'm going to do is, maybe I will be nice and I'll put a copy of this up on the website. Here's all the templates I've made. And all I pretty much did is take paper, fold it in half, draw the design I want, and off to the races. You can see, it's all just scrap here that I've used for multiple things and 
old pieces of garbage that I just drew freehand the design that I wanted. If there's lots of interest, I will do, I will digitize that. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to digitize that, but I'll find a way and make it work. Now, once you have this done, we're going to be working on the bottom first to get all of this trim in place, all on the sides and the such like that. So what you want to do is take through this quarter inch EVA foam. This is the big exercise, the, the big anti-fatigue mat that you buy at most uh, hardware stores. It comes in a big roll. I like it because obviously it's in a long piece and it's cheap. The two things I like the best. Now, you'll see the back has got this texture on. You, this, the polyurethane glue holds onto this stuff pretty well regardless of this texture. I still suggest you sand down a bit if you can, but if you can't, it's not the end of the world. So what you're gonna be doing now is you're gonna be building a whole bunch of strips of 1.5 inch EVA. And these are going to be used for filling in these spots here. All over the place. So, yeah, I'm sorry. Hopefully you still like me after you're done, you know, making, by my guess, you could probably have to make six of these and it takes a while. But anyways, I'm gonna continue on. On the inside here, you'll see that those are in place and those are just quarter inch EVA foam again. And I have to do one on the front, but I'm not putting that one in until I have the front foam on it. So we're going to take it from there. When I'm done, I'll be back to talk about how we continue on. Now you can see that all the trim is on. There's some more going on in the inside. You can see the black pieces are there. They're in, but they're not finished yet, but they will be soon. You can see here all of the gold trim that I put on. This is the inch and a half stuff. And if you look really closely, you can see pins. This just helps when you're gluing that the urethane glue doesn't pop it off. You take those out when you're done. It's just really good for positioning. Now, we get to these end caps, and these are actually pretty decently complicated to make. This here is a single piece, and this here is a piece of the thinner, I think, quarter inch mat. Now, what you wanna do is when you go do this, you can see you have to use contact cement on this because it allows you to make this joint here as clean as possible so you can't really see it when it's all together and it's all done now what you do for this as you can see here these are the other side that are not finished yet and this patterning here have fun i just took it and said okay i did since i did these here i wanted to carry that onto the top so i just kind of winged it i measured a bit put 45 degree angles on you just want to make sure that the one thing that you do is the width here you want it to be somewhat similar to the width here i went a bit wider to cover up those screw holes that are up here but anyways i'm going to continue on build the second side of this and i'll be back to talk more about how we're doing this anyways i'll be back oh, oh, oh. lots and lots of progress okay now with everything that you're seeing here i'm just going to go through and describe how things went how i did it now first thing we're going to do is we're going to swing around to the back of it here now these hinges are a little bit different than what you would normally see so this is just a piece of thin foam because the hinges are in behind the foam here it complicates everything so what I did is I did a really nice just a shape a lot of this stuff is freehand as I went you know I put it together build it done I just contact cemented this in behind the hinge here on both sides and then contact cemented the whole thing on which allows it can't get it from here it allows it to swing open without it to actually having any impact because when it opens these end up completely closing up and they rest against each other as you can see all through here all of this trim this is the inch and a half just a ton of carving makes this makes this treasure chest look just fantastic now I'm just gonna swing around to the front again okay now here you can see that now the crest on the front is actually glued on and done. Everything's working here. This was just a piece of uh, shish kebab skewer through and then glued on. It just makes a nice little latch to make it work well. All EVA foam, so you know, it doesn't really cause any problem. Now, oh, inside, you can see all along the top, we've got trim, all on the inside, we've got trim. I wanna go over how you do this part right here. Now. You put this top piece on, which is quarter inch foam. 
I ran into some problems. One of the th things I would change is how I did those hinges. I did not leave enough space at the back. I only made enough space for one layer of this foam. So what happens is it binds and that's why there's no piece of foam there. I'm trying to figure out what I'm gonna do otherwise. So now what you do is you take your, your top piece of foam and you'll rubber cement the edge of both of them. And then you put it down and then in place, you use the Dremel and you combine the edge here. You can see a slight discrepancy there, but you know what, in real life, it's, it's less obvious than what it is on the camera. Now, the only thing you're seeing here is all of these little uh, dots are just wooden half semicircles I bought on Amazon and just spray painted black and then added some gold paint to it. This whole thing is pretty straightforward. It just takes time and it's a lot of finicky work to make it work. Now on the side here is the last thing. You can see I got some touch-ups to do on my brown. Those correspond to the piece of wood on the inside to allow you to put handles through. I went into town, completely forgot the uh, rope I was going to buy to do this. So you don't get to see the rope in this time, but you'll get to see it next week when I do the treasure that sits on the inside here. But anyways, this is as far as we're ringing it this week. This chest has just turned out fantastic and I'm looking forward to it as a completed prop. Because as you can see, either open or closed, the thing is just a fantastic looking unit and it's massive. I kind of built it a bit too large. But anyways, I hope you are enjoying the trip up to now. The next thing we're going to be doing, uh, which will be next week, is I'm going to be adding some dark darkening around these edges just to age it up a bit. And then the whole thing gets a coat of uh, clear matte finish on it to finish it up. Regardless, thanks for tuning in. And holy, I, I know this may seem like a big jump going uh, saw and everything just appeared on here. It's just a matter of grinding this out. There's 52 pieces of foam on this thing and when it's all finished. It has taken me forever. My garage has got like a quarter inch of the black dust all over it from where I did all this carving. Regardless, it is fantastic once you start getting into it and it'll get you into using EVA foam in your props. Regardless, thanks for tuning in. I will see you on the final part three next week where we do the inside treasure. The handles will be on and we'll just finish locking this thing up beautifully. Regardless, have a good one all.